Hello and welcome to the show today. We are joined by a guest that goes by the name of The Brain. He's a leading mental and emotional strategist in the UK, all coming up on the show. Welcome to The Silburn Show. Before we get today's episode started, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the age of social media and how it is affecting our youth. In a world of mobile phones, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Tumblr, yeah, 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 even more, this generation is the first to have constant connectivity to the world around them. While this has some advantage in bringing to light world issues we may not have otherwise had access to, it has also brought about the exposure to a demand for perfection and the latest accessories, all for the benefit of our now extended social and social media circles. Studies have also showcased how this has brought about a rise in anxiety, depression, and loneliness in young people. There is also an increase in cyberbullying, which has seen a rise in teen suicides. So, should we place all the blame at the doorstep of social media companies, or should we be looking for a resolve internally in the home? Should parents police their children? time on the internet. Even if they wanted to, could they when it has become so integral to everyday living? How do we begin to combat the superficial value systems further perpetuated unwittingly by the existence of social media platforms? I'd like to hear your opinion. Share your comments below on Twitter with the hashtag SilvernTV. Thank you very much. For our guests today, we have Kevin Bennett. AK, the brain, who is joining us. If you say the brain, what does that mean? I don't know. We'll find out very soon. He's a leading mental and emotional strategist in the UK, having helped over 200,000 people worldwide and in this method. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Kevin. How you doing? <laughs> Can I pick your brain? Yes, yes. <laughs> I get that all the time. <laughs> really? So people pick your brain all the while. What do you think? I get it all the time, yeah. So it's a constant thing. So I'm used to it now. You're used to it. Yeah, fantastic. To it. Uh-huh. So you call yourself, um, Kevin, a mm-hmm. mental and emotional strategist. Yeah. Can you explain to our viewers watching what is a mental and emotional strategist and what do your strategies entail? Mm-hmm. Okay, so a mental and emotional strategist, let's break it up because two yeah. sections to yeah. it. One section is mentally. So I help people with their mindset, mm-hmm. help them um, to decipher situations help them to deal with blockages and also help them to strategically make things happen either within their personal world or their business world. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, emotionally, denying it or not, for a lot of people, they're in denial about their emotions, Mm -hmm. yeah? And every decision we make is based upon either running from an emotion or running to an emotion. So it's like desire and fear, yeah? So why do you do what you do? Why do you wear what you wear? Yes. why do you go to the job you go to? Are you going, are you going to work because you're in fear mm-hmm. mode? Mm-hmm. Or are you going to work because you desire what you do, you love what you do? Yes, yes. Why do you wear the clothes that you wear? Mm-hmm. Why do you wear your glasses? Why do you, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. It's all based around your emotions, what emotion you're running from and what emotion are you running to? And those emotions are broken up into a further 21, 21, 22 other emotions. So you've got like- 21, 22 other emotions? I thought yes. emotion were just, my emotions. No, because you, <laughs> you, you, it, it's broken up. So you've got like fear, anger, yeah. um, desire, um, desire. Mm. you've got um, hopefulness, mm. you've got jealousy, you've got mm. rage, you've got optimism, you've got right. pessimism. Okay, so, so breaking so up. Yeah. So yeah, so they're, they're broken up. And then if you was to look at it from a wider perspective, it goes into frequencies, protons, electrons, neutrons, quirks, which yeah. also affects your emotions as well. Okay, that, yeah. that's, that's powerful. So therefore, um, th- then do you see a demand and a drive for such requirement that helping persons with in, in this area? Yes, on both sides. Mm. Some people can't articulate that's what they want. So they may say, I'm going through something. So when I'm working with a person, they don't know exactly yes. that's the title they're looking for. They say, I have these problems or I have these blockages or I need help within these sectors or whatever. So then what I do is I would say, right, if it's a, you know, just average person on the street that's trying to find their yeah. way, I ask them four fundamental questions, which mm-hmm. I can then decipher yes. everything that's going on in their life. So question one I ask them is, how do you feel? 
And uh, for the first four or five answers, yes. it will be surface answers. I feel frustrated. Mm -hmm. I feel whatever. And I push a bit more and I get a bit deeper. And it normally goes back down to their childhood. Yeah. Yes. Then I ask, why? Why do you feel that way? Okay. Then the third question is, how would you like to feel? So the first two is about mm -hmm. where they are and where they've been. Yes. Yeah. And normally it comes from fear or frustration. Where would you like to go? Where would, how would you like to feel? So how would you like to feel represents yes. future, represents desire? Mm -hmm. Yes, how would you like to feel? I used to think everyone would say, I would like to feel happy. Not everyone wants to feel happy. Yes. Some people just want to feel content. Some few people just want to feel desired, wanted. So, so, so therefore, you are then going into a situation, a, a person's brain. Again, I'm going to say a mm -hmm. brain, even though mm -hmm. you're called a brain. Mm -hmm. and, and then I'm thinking about... This is weird, mm. but I'm thinking about Clint Eastwood now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about yeah. going into a town, you know, some bad guys or whatever like mm -hmm. that, and they hire this person like Clint Eastwood to go in and deal with these bad guys. Yeah. So therefore, he goes in and he assesses the situation. Mm -hmm. Is it that you go in, you deal with it, and then you leave out of town? <laughs> in and out. Do, do you know what it is? It's, it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's funny because you never know what you're going into. Yes. Yeah? And you have to put your L plates on every time you go in there. Yes, yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when I go in there, I feel around because you can imagine, like, some people's got dark things going on in their life. Mm -hmm. And you have to go in there with care. Yes. Because a lot of people, they go in someone's life and they open up a wound and they can't close they it. They can't again. close it. Yeah, they can't close it. So sometimes I am not a fan of people say to me, Kev, are you an inspirational speaker or whatever? Yeah. And I say, no, far from it. And I'm not a fan of a lot of inspirational speakers because they open up wounds and they don't strategically put it. them back together or close them. Mm. So a lot of people go into an environment and they jump and they do mm. something, but they strategically can't put themselves back together again or mm. the environment around them can't do that. And this is where I, I become unique in that sense. I right. go into their world. I dissect everything that's going mm. on, and then I put them back together. So therefore, you do not open everything then? Well, I only open what I know I can close. Right. But normally, I mean, based upon how I look at everything as its full circumference, it, it all, all, always goes back to one or two things. So I, I, there's never been one time that I've really said I can't close it. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a short break and come right back. One Step Forward Consultancy, Every Child Matters in the Caribbean, fundraising dinner and dance with Gala Entertainment by Donna Marie, Paul Dawkins, Frederica Tibbs, Audrey Scott, Trevor Walters, Lady Lex, Andrew Slowly and Clarks. Hosted by me, Alison Mason and Marcia G. On Saturday the 19th of November at the Croydon Conference Centre, Surrey Street, Croydon, CRO1RG from 6pm. Tickets available via 07. 960-368-048. Look out for the OSF conference in May in Jamaica. Pseudo psychotherapy. Explain that to me. Because being a mental and emotional strategist, some may consider you what you do as pseudo psychotherapy. See, the thing is, it's hard to put titles on mm. different scenarios. Yes. It's very hard to do that. And the reason why it's very hard to do that is because someone will come to me and they would say, these are my problems, mm. yeah? This is my mental situation, Yes. yeah? And do you play snooker or pool or anything like that? Uh, the, maybe pool, but um, okay. that is when you end up going with your kids to some fun land or something. <laughs> yeah, there, right? And then you're playing with them to have right. fun, but not like a regular thing, yes. When you're playing a game of pool or mm. snooker, yeah, you're in the game, so you can't see the shots. Yes. Yeah, it's the audience looking in. Normally, would say that shot there's the best shot. Oh, he's crazy! Why did he do that? Exactly. Like that. Yeah, because yeah. they're too deep inside. Right. Yeah. So when I take two, three steps back, and I look at everything, then I can turn around and say these are the shots to play. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I am a part of the process. Sometimes I am. Stepping back and saying, here's the navigation route. Yes, yes. So I think it varies. It, it really depends on the scenario and the, and the individual. Mm. It all, mm. it, 
every individual, I know people say it all the time, but every individual is very, very different. The science still remains the same, but their, their perception of themselves and the world is always different. So therefore, everyone has got to be assessed based on their own merits and affinities. Yes. And, and now how does the knowledge you share then go just beyond words? I mean, because you mentioned about inspirational mm -hmm. speakers and everything, yeah. and a lot of it is words. Yeah. And words are powerful. I mean, years ago, people used to say, sticks and stones can hurt my bones, but words cannot harm me. But, words are more dangerous but we're realizing now that words are more dangerous. They're more yeah. dangerous. Yeah. So how does the knowledge you share go beyond just words then? Okay, so I have a toolbox, what I call a toolbox. Mm. And this toolbox is like... Imagine you, you've, you've got a car, you bring your car to a garage, yes. okay? And when you go to that garage, he has only one spanner. You've got 20 things wrong with your car. Mm. He only has one spanner. Mm. You're not going to leave your car with him because you know he's not equipped mm. to fix your car. Yes. Okay? The human body and the mind is a lot more complicated. So away from words, I build tools for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things what they do when they get up in the morning, things what they have to do in the <clears throat> afternoon, things what they have to do in the evening, mm -hmm. the conversations they have with themselves. Because your whole world, my whole world, um, are, is based upon narratives, yes. yeah, based upon a story. And every little thing happens in our life is the story adding to it. Yes. Yeah, within that moment. Layers by layers. Layers by layers. So if you can imagine, um, I'll give you a scenario. I'm going to try and tone it down, yes, yeah? Yes, Because I normally use explicits just yes. to break into people's yes. world when I'm using it. So I'm going to tone it so down. So you really, when, you, when yeah. you're talking to people, you're like, you've got to do that, man. Do you know, it, everyone's different. Because I <laughs> may say that to one person, they close up. And yes. I say to another person, they open. They say, yeah, I can relate. Yeah, I can relate. everyone's yeah, 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 different. Yeah, yeah. But let me, I'll explain it like this, okay? When we were born, we were precious diamonds. Mm. Yeah, we were a precious diamond from God. Right? Yes, yeah, yes. So that's who we are. That's who we are. Yeah. Okay. And then our environment around us said, you're not good enough. You're not quick enough. You're not dark enough. You're not thin enough. You're not light enough, mm. whatever it may be. So now muck is being placed all over the diamond. Mm. So the diamond is who you are. The muck is who you think you are. Mm. Then you get sprinkles and you sprinkle yourself with all the glittery stuff because you want to show the world that yes. you're not what you're thinking about. Yes. So wearing nice clothes and diamonds and driving nice cars. Mm. That's the sprinkles that they try to sell to the world because mm. of self-conversation of the muck. Mm. But they've forgotten who they are, which is the diamond. Yes. Yeah. So my goal is to say, you don't need the sprinkles and you are not the muck. Yes. So let's wipe away the muck, which would automatically wipe away the sprinkles yeah, and, and you'll go back to the place of a diamond. Yes. And this is when you know when someone's energy is so rich when someone's vibe, you know when someone walks into the room mm -hmm. and you can feel their greatness within them? Yeah, yeah. That's when they've gone back to that place of a diamond. So going into that, I have to identify mm. why do you have the sprinkles that you have and what conversations, self-conversations you're having. So right now as we're talking, mm -hmm. we're having two conversations at all times. Mm -hmm. A conversation in your mind and a conversation you're having out loud. And, um, and you're right about that because in the conversation, in, while you're talking to me, there's something coming in my exactly. mind. Exactly. Which right. I want to share, but I wanted to finish first. You know? Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. So you're having two conversations. Yes. Yeah. Now, the conversation in your mind, is it debilitating you? Mm. Is it stopping you from going to achieve what you need to achieve, even mm. though what you're saying out loud sounds yeah. amazing. Yes, yes. So what I do, I ignore the surface and I go into the mind. So sometimes you listen to what is not being said. Yes. So right now, my thinking And is, also, yeah. I, I look at their body language, yes. I look at their micro-expressions. Yes. So I read micro-expressions and everything very, very well that yes. a lot of people don't know. So I can yes. walk into an environment and I can look and I say, that person's suffering from insecurity because of this. Or that well, they, 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 how they look and everything. How like. they look yeah. and, all of, and all the rest of it. Mm. So I can look at their self-conversation based upon their body language, mm. how they start. So there's obvious ones. Mm. We know when someone's lacking confidence, for example, yes. on how they probably standing or slouching or whatever, mm. Mm. or if someone's uncomfortable, if they're pulling their dress down every minute or whatever it may be. Mm. So there's obvious ones, but then there's deeper ones as well, like fraction of a fraction of a second. Yeah. Um, how, how is their eyes or their mouth or whatever reacting? So there's deeper ones. Yeah. So even when people are not saying stuff to me, I'm reading other things anyway. So therefore, okay. Before we go to a break, um, yeah. in society like today now, mm -hmm. you know, like with um, young people, yeah. do young people actually want this? Do they ask for this? Or is it more persons who are more of a senior level, more 
settled people who require this sort of... No, do you know, we're in a day and age right now where a lot of young people are very aware that something's wrong in their life. Mm. You are aware if you haven't had enough hugs as a child. You are aware if you're not, um, you're not feeling great about mm. yourself. You are aware of that. Now, the question is, does, uh, do a lot of young people value it enough to take time to investigate yeah. it and fix it? Mm. That's what the problem is. A lot of, when you are younger, you are aware that there's problems, mm -hmm. but how much time do you want to invest on it? And, and then, That's what the problem and is. And then what normally is seen most mm -hmm. time is not persons like what you're saying, it's mm -hmm. normally the flurry yeah. side. Yeah. Um, the flurry side of you can do anything you're going to be, you know, you're the best, you're the greatest. Mm -hmm. But then just that being said by itself, it carries no merit. And the reason why yeah. it carries no merit, and that's why I said a lot of times I'm not a fan of inspirational speeches mm. and stuff. The reason why it carries no merit is because, once again, it sometimes comes across patronizing to people. Yes. Imagine I've done a test with someone, very quickly, I've done mm. a test with someone, and it was the same conversation I was having. That there was like, why ain't um, people just really taking charge of themselves and this and that? And yeah. Why are they not dreaming and dreaming big enough and yeah. whatever? Yeah. And I said to the woman, it was, it was a seminar of about 100 mm. people. And I said to the woman, I want to do something with you. I don't mm. want you to take offense to it. I don't want you to do anything, but I'm going to teach mm. you something about mm. what a lot of people are going through. Yes. And she says, okay. So we had a break. It was about a 30 minute break interval. Mm. So I ran, we got like a little, um, it's like a little tub mm. basin of water mm. about this size. Okay, put the water in. And I said to her, I'm going to ruin your makeup. And she said, okay. So mm. I said, just yeah. for the, in everyone. So I said, are you a positive thinker? She says, yes. I said, okay. Do you, are you swayed by much things in life when you're focused? She says, no. I said, great. I want you to think about all the great things that's going to happen in your life five years from now mm -hmm. or 10 years from now. You choose. And she yeah. said, okay. And I gave her about five minutes to really get into her zone. Mm. And then when she got into her zone, I gently pushed her head in some water. You push her physically? Yes, yeah. physically. Mm. Not hard, but just yeah. gently. Yeah. And I held her, but I was firm with it. Mm. After about 10 seconds, she started to panic. Mm. Yeah, so I gave it 15 seconds just to teach her a lesson. Mm. Yeah, and you had the water already there, the water was in there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she didn't drown, but mm. she suffered that. Yeah, and when her head popped up, I said to her, What was on your mind? She said, Survival. I yeah. said, That's what most people are going through. Just so when breathe. you're saying to them, Think big, their head's underwater, they're in survival mode. Mm, mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? I learned that technique when I was watching some kind of CIA and stuff yeah. and do waterboarding where they used to torture people and those people couldn't focus. So I learned it from yes. there. And it was, for me, that was the ideal scenario or metaphor to teach a lot of people who yes. can't understand another person's world, understands another person's pain, yes. and just say to them, think big. It's patronizing to a lot of people. Right. If someone's got bills <clears> to pay and, and the bailiffs are like one day away, it's hard for, to someone to say to them, think big and wish it into your world. Mm -hmm. It's not realistic for that person. And this is where the, um, the strategy side of me kicks right, in, where I say, right. right, stage one, stage two, let's hold off the bailies for two weeks. Let's put this in place. Yes. That's where they say I'm the brain, I'm the think tank in Fantastic. that kind of sense. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for part one with Kevin Bennett and join us next week for part two. Thank you. Here's the thing. Anytime you think about time, yeah, anytime you think about time, yeah? Right? <laughs> Time equals fear. Yes. When you think about, I'm getting older, I need to be somewhere, look what's happened. Time always equals fear. When you look at it from a deep perspective, we're all made of energy. We're made of atoms, yeah? But inside of atoms, like protons, electrons, neutrons, quarks, and so on and so forth. So I first look at what energy state that person's in. Because, and this is where words have relationships to energy, yeah? So if you think about, yeah, what you, well, even a self-conversation, you don't even need to say it out loud because self-conversations bring you in a mood or bring you out of a mood, right? You can turn around and you can think about someone and you feel a glow, you feel happy, or you think about another person and you're angry. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like, and don't forget to comment, but first subscribe. Hey guys, my name's Kevin Bennett. I've just been on The Silborn Show. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's amazing. You'll love it. Tune in now.